Hello and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be doing sort items by groups respecting dependencies. And so honestly this is a pretty brutal problem, kind of like yesterday's. It's, I think it's very tough. Um, and definitely if you got asked this in a coding interview, there's pretty much no way you're going to be able to do it on time. But it is still nice to go over and to understand and, you know, like build up intuition. And I think if you can do this problem, you know, in some time, even if you like know the solution, if you can code it up, it's still not that easy. Uh, th then you'd be ready to tackle these, you know, the more medium to like less hard problems uh, of this variety. But so let's read it. So there are n items, each belonging to zero or more m groups, where group i is the group that the ith item belongs to, and is equal to negative one if the ith item belongs to no group. The item in the group are zero index. The group can have no item belonging to it. And you want to return a sorted list of items such that the items that belong to the same group are next to each other. There are some relations between these items where before items is a list containing all the items that come before the ith item. And return any solution if there's more than one, and return empty list if there's no solution. Honestly, I would say even like understanding what they're asking isn't super straightforward. So let's go over that first. So essentially you have items, and these are the numbers of the items, and every item belongs to a group. And there are m groups max. So like in this example, there are two groups. So there's group zero, group one, and then every other item belongs to group negative one, meaning it doesn't belong to a group. And then you have also these dependencies, and this is also not the best format to understand, but essentially what this is saying is for every single index, if there are numbers in that, then those numbers have to come before that. So like here, there's nothing, but here, this is index one. So it's saying number six, has to come before one. So they're kind of showing here. Six has to come before one. Five has to come before two. Six has to come before three. Three, six has to come before four and so on. And then finally you have an output. And so one thing you have to notice is every number in a group, if there is a group, they have, they have to be together. So like two and five come together and also three, four and six come together. And then all these other ones can like, they can be far apart. They're just in different groups. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you are going to want to put everything in a group and a nice and easy way to do that is just set, go through all your numbers. So let's say you have two groups. What you were going to do is you're going to have two groups and you're just going to say, okay, what's the first available group? Well, it's two. So you can just go through this group and you can just say, if it's negative one, let's just replace it by whatever first groups available. So we're going to make this two. Then the next available number is going to be three. And then finally we make this four. And so now you have all these groups and it's a little bit more convenient. So that's the first thing you're going to want to do. Second thing you're going to want to do is, first of all, you're going to want to know how to use a topological sort for this problem. I will briefly describe what it is, but not in too much detail, because honestly, if you've never seen it before, like you should not even attempt this problem. You should just do an easier uh, problem. And there are topological sort problems like course schedule. I would definitely recommend there's like a few course schedules. Start with those. Then once you're super comfortable with that, then go with this. Because if you can't do that one, you're just going to be completely lost on this one. But essentially, in a, in a topological sort, you have dependencies. So I'm just going to draw out like a basic graph. So you're going to have some graph. And you will have dependencies, meaning you'll have edges from nodes to other nodes. And they can be whatever. And essentially, you want to get your nodes in an order. Like let's say this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. First of all, the one thing to note between for a uh, for a topological sort is that if there's ever a cycle, you will never get like a valid answer. So like here, there's a cycle, and you will never get a valid answer for something like that unless you can get rid of some edges, you know, that that are available. But essentially, what you do for a topological sort is it's basically sim simulating like what's the order I can take things in, assuming things are prereq. So if like zero is a prereq for one, zero is a prereq for two, zero is a prereq for three, three is a prereq for four, and so on. And so the first thing you do in a topological sort is you put everything with no prereqs into some kind of data structure. And then those are the things you're gonna be using first. So I'm gonna use zero first. And then every time you use something, you get rid of all the edges coming for it, from it, meaning like, okay, this is a prereq for stuff, but now we used it. So now those things can be done. So now that we use zero, now we can take any other number. It doesn't really matter. So we can take like one and we'd get rid of all the edges from one, two, get all the edges from two, three, get rid of all the edges from four or from three. And then finally get rid of this edge when you use a three, now you have a four. 
And so this would be your order, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. There are like a few different available orders, but this is essentially one that works. So that's pretty much topological sort, and you will run into scenarios where you have a loop, and then you can't do anything. Like for example, nothing has zero in degree. So like here, you can't really pick anything because everything's dependent on each other. But that's essentially what it is in like a you know quick two minute explanation. Okay, so now that we set these groups, what do we do next? So we got to do two things here. And we have to essentially do a topological sort for items and then for groups. So for the items, let's just like the way you would do a topological sort is you would have a hash map of every single like item and then you would also have let's actually instead of having a hash map like yeah so so you should like i said you should you should be familiar with the topological source so normally you have a hash map of the item and then all of the things it's a prereq for and then you also have these integers but instead of doing that we're actually going to just draw out the nodes to make it easier and i'm just going to assume that you know how to do a basic topological sort so let's draw out zero one two because I don't want to draw out the hash map, I think this is going to be a little bit easier to understand if you know a topological sort, which, like I said, look into if you don't. Okay, so for zero, let's just draw out these prereqs. So six has to come before one. So that means there's a path from six to one. Let's draw that. Okay, now five has to come before two, right? Yeah, that's correct. Five has to come before two. Okay. Three has to come before six. Uh, actually, I don't think so. No, 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 definitely not. So five has to come before two. Six has to come before three. Sorry, six has to come before three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if you look at our answer, six has to come before three. Okay, and three and six have to come before four. So three and six. Okay. So the first thing we can do. Is like I said, we can we can have any valid order work. So let's just make an array of a valid sequence. So obviously we can we can just use like zero first, right? Like that would be fine. Because does anything rely on zero? I don't believe so, right? No, there's nothing that relies like so, so let's just take everything that is fine. So zero and then all, all these empty arrays. So zero, five, six, seven have nothing into it, right? So let's just take those first. So zero, five, six, seven. Let's just say this is our order for now. Okay, that's cool. So now let's get rid of these indices. So in every index from zero, there's none. Every index from five, every index from six. I didn't mean to do that. I really didn't mean to do that. Okay, every index from six and every index from seven. Okay. Now what else is available? Well, two is available. Okay. So we can get rid of every index from there. Three is also available. Okay, sounds good. So we can get rid of that. Oh, by the way, we didn't get rid of this index here, but yeah, essentially this is like one valid path. So this would technically work and we could check, right? So zero, five, six, and seven, uh, yeah, don't have anything. Six has to come before one, it does. Five has to come before two, it does. Six has to come before three, it does. And three and six have to come before four, and yeah, finally you would put in four last. That's the one we forgot, I guess. And there we go. So this is one way, this is one like valid topological sort. Okay, that's cool. Next thing, what we need to do is we need to do the same thing, but we need to do it for the groups. I'm gonna accidentally delete this if I do this. It's kind of annoying, whatever, we're gonna leave this. Okay, so now we need to do the same thing for the groups. And so for the groups, what I'm gonna actually do is I'm gonna draw out groups as a node with a bunch of nodes in it. So, Let's just draw out these groups. So group zero is going to have node three, four, and oh, and by the way, so for this topological sort, like once you do this, if this array is not equal to your number of numbers, then you have an invalid topological sort. You can just return, you can just return an empty array right away. It means you couldn't sort your nodes, so there's no way to do that. So if this is uh, not the length of n, you just return false straight away. Okay, so now that we sorted our, we, or we have a valid topological sort, and we'll just say this is the start here. Okay, now for our groups, we also need to do the same thing. So like I said, I'm going to put the nodes in a group in like one single node. So three, four, six are in group zero. So let's just write uh, how do I want to do this? Okay, I'm going to I'm going to write the nodes in there. And then I'm going to I'm going to write the group number in a different color. Okay, so in group one, we have two and five. Oh, yeah, a little bigger. Two and five. Okay, now in group two, we have zero. 
So zero. In group three, we have uh, one. And then group four, we have seven. And let me draw out these group numbers just so I can show you that. So three, four, six is in group zero. So I'll just say G zero. Zero is in group two, so G two. One is in group three, G three. Seven is group four, G four. And two, five are in group one, right? Yeah, so G one, okay. Now, essentially, we're going to do this kind of same thing for these dependencies. And for every dependency, we're just going to draw a, a draw a line, meaning that's a prereq, right? So like, for example, if three is a prereq for five, we're just going to draw a line here saying like this is a prereq. And we can have multiple lines from one group to another group. And that's going to be how we're going to have our in degrees for our groups. Let's actually get rid of, we don't really need this. Like, yes, this doesn't work, but it's not super important for example, two. Okay, so let's do that. So let's double check here for these dependencies. So six is a prereq for one. So where's six and where's one? Okay, six is over here, one is over here. So there's a prereq here, okay? That means that this group zero is a prereq for group three at least one time, it might be multiple times. Cause like if all of these are prereq for one, then you would have three dependencies. So you can have, you can have multiple edges from one group to the other and that's where we're gonna count them. And the way we're gonna represent that is we're just gonna have a hash map of like the group will be the index, and then we're gonna have a list of groups that that is a uh, prereq for, and it can have the same group multiple times to represent a repeating edge. Okay, so now we are here. So five is a prereq for two. Okay, so you notice five is a prereq for two. So this group is actually an in degree for itself, right? Uh, let me check that again one more time. Yes. So this group is a prereq for itself. And now if a group is a prereq for itself, obviously, you know, as long as as long as long five and two are in the right order, this, this doesn't really exist, right? So I'm gonna leave this, but as long as, as long as our numbers are five and then two together, like every group, you have to write the numbers together. But notice this is gonna be important later on. Notice for this group, you have to write five and then two, you cannot write two and then five because five is a prereq for two, so this group is a prereq for itself, but this group is kind of free, you just have to make sure that the numbers are in order. And that's also, that's gonna be important later on. Okay, now six is a prereq for three, so this group is also a prereq for itself. So notice here, if six is a prereq for three, we have to write six before three. Okay, and then three, six are a prereq for four, so I'm gonna write one more loop as an in degree type of thing. Now, like I said, this isn't really an in degree, so these these we're not gonna these we're not gonna count, but I'm just showing them to symbolize that. So technically, this group can be first, right? This group can be first because the only the only prereq for a group is this. So the only group that can't be first is this group here. This, this group has to come first. But notice how three. I'm actually instead of doing that, instead of doing this little like line, I'm actually gonna draw like a prereq in here and leave that. And I think that'll be a lot better. So yeah. So six is a prereq for one. Um, which is that, and then five is a prereq for two. So actually I'm gonna draw it like this. Yeah, I think that's gonna symbolize it a lot better. And then six is a prereq for three. And then three, six is a prereq for four. So I'm actually gonna draw this here and this here. There we go. Okay, so notice like if you were to write out these nodes this way, and, and we pretty much have this, right? If we, if we were to write out the nodes this way, there's a bunch of valid ways we could do this. Like we could totally use this first. And this is kind of what we want in the end. But in the beginning, we're only gonna have just like the, we're gonna have separately the nodes that are prereqs for each other, right? In this order. And we're gonna have the groups. So notice what you can do. And let me, like once you have this, let, let's see what we can do here, right? Once we have these like dependencies. So let's just write out some order for some groups, right? Like we could totally do that. So let's do that. Let's just write out some order for some groups essentially. And then like any one of those orders would be fine, right? Pretty much. So let, let's think of like what one valid way we could essentially write out our groups. Well, one way we could write out our groups would be like, so group zero, then we could do group one, then we could do group two, then we could do group three, then we could do group four. Like this is totally fine for a valid order for the groups, right? There's a bunch, but now 
Notice in this group zero, six and three come before four. So as long as, so if we just have like this, and we have this, now we can get a solution. So let's let's see what that's gonna look like. So essentially, let's move this a little bit. So this is the groups, and this is the nodes. So all we have to do for the groups, as long as we know like what nodes are in each group, all we have to do is, instead of writing out the groups like this, we have to just write out the, the sorted nodes. And we have these sorted nodes. So we can literally just like go through these nodes and put them in whatever groups they need to be in a sorted order, right? So for zero, let's take a look at what nodes are in zero. It is uh, uh, this node here, three, four, six. And let's look. Let's take a look at the order of three, four, six. So here's six, here's three, here's four. So we can just go through this array and put the numbers in their appropriate groups. And then all of these groups are gonna be looking like this, right? So for group zero, it's gonna look sorted, six, three, four. And then for group one, what's in group one? Well, it's just, uh, it's five and two, right? Also sorted, we're starting here, five, two. Okay, what about group two? Group two has zero. And then group three has one. And group uh, four has seven. And so notice how like this, now that we have like each group is an array, we can just take every number from all these arrays and like in order, and then that will be our result. And that would be totally fine, right? So this would be a fine result, like six, three, four, five, two, zero, one, seven. And the only way we could not have a solution is if when we do the topological sort of the nodes, we can't do it. Or also for the groups, we can have a cycle, right? Like let's say our groups look like this. Then like we can't really do anything because we can't really pull any, we can't pull anything out of these. Like these all have in degree one and we can't do anything about it. So if you have a cycle, so let's write down our steps actually. So one, give groups that have no group, a new group, right? So for every group, negative one to whatever. Okay, two, build our dependency arrays. Dependency arrays. So like for a topological sort, you need an array of edges and you also need a, uh, and you also need like the, the in degree array. So build our dependency list and in degree array for both the groups and the uh, nodes, I guess. Three, perform topological sort, topological sort of nodes and the groups if we have a cycle, meaning we don't have all nodes groups in each array, return this because we have no solution. Four, put sorted nodes in each group for the sorted groups. And then finally five, just concatenate all of the subarrays, subarrays to return an array of numbers. And so yeah, that's the tricky part about this is like to recognize that you have to do a topological sort of the nodes and the groups. And then if one of those fails, you don't have a solution, but if they both succeed, you're guaranteed to have a solution. And the way to have a guaranteed solution is you have to make sure that they do tell you like for each group, every, all the nodes have to be together, but they have to, they might have to be together in a certain order. They have to be together in a sorted order because some nodes might have dependencies within a group as, as they are here and here. Okay. And that's pretty much it. And now we can look at the code and I tried to comment it and it was also super messy. So I tried to comment it and make some helper functions and stuff to make it a little bit cleaner, but here it is. So remember our first step is we have assign unique group IDs, which your first available group is M and you just check if it's negative one, just give it a new group ID M. Then you're gonna build your dependency graphs. So you have an item dependency graph and your group dependency graph, which is just gonna be a list of the whatever group it is or node. So it's gonna be the key is gonna be like the node or the graph, or sorry, the node or the group. And then the value will be the list of nodes or graphs or items that depend on it. 
then you also have these in degrees, just like in a normal topological sort. And then you essentially add all your stuff, right? So you add an edge from an item to another item. So you go through this before items and each prereq and before items is an array, remember? So, so you essentially you have to check for every single element in there and then you just add the prereqs to your item you also increase the in degree of each item. And then you also, for the groups, you wanna be careful. So when you add these uh, in degrees for the groups, you wanna make sure that like, let's say it's these two items, like let's say three is a prereq for four, you wanna make sure they're in different groups, right? Cause if they're in the same group, you don't wanna add this like, this is not a thing. I just drew that to kind of symbolize that there's a dependency within the, uh, within the, um, the group. So you just want to make sure, like, are they in different groups? And if they're in different groups, then let's add a dependency and let's also increase the in degree. So finally, we return all these. And then we have a topological sort function that can either take a uh, item dependency graph or it can take a um, a uh, group dependency graph. And then it can also take an in degree, right? Because basically the the code for the in degrees for or the topological sort for the item and the group is pretty much the same. You just need two different like variable names. So I just made a helper function there. Just like in yesterday, you save a lot of code there. And then, yeah, so you have your output array and then you have your deck for a normal topological sort. You could also use a queue if you wanted to, or sorry, a stack if you wanted to. I think it's the same. Okay, and then essentially what you do is while you, the way this works for topological sort is you take everything within degree zero, you put it into your deck and then while your deck exists, you keep popping from it and you keep decreasing the in degree of all the things that have a dependency on it. And then if that has an in degree of zero, you want to append it to your deck. And then at the very end, you check, do I actually have like this length of this, uh, this length of the sorted order? Should it be the same length as in degree? Because in degree will be like the number of items or the number of uh, groups or whatever. And if it's not, that means we, we had a cycle and we couldn't actually sort everything. And so if we have a cycle, we can just like return false. Okay, and so here's our steps. So we, we assign new IDs, we build our dependency graphs, we perform our topological sort with literally the same code, and then you check, you know, if, if, if this returned false, right? So if this returned false, then what you wanna do is you want to make sure that you, uh, let me see here, if I don't know sorted order, yeah. So basically, yeah, if you if you return false from here, uh, then you want to make sure that you return false, right? Because you, you had a cycle in one of these. And then finally, you make an order list of items within each group, not that hard. So you essentially make another dictionary of ordered items by group. And then you go through your items in the items in sorted order, and you just put them in the group that they need to be in. And it's very easy to get the group because you just use the group, right? So, if, so that's the nice thing about this is you can use the group, this group here to get the group right away. Okay, and then once you put them in your, once once all your stuff is in sorted order, then finally you have one last step where you go through all your sorted groups and you just keep adding all of the elements that were in each sorted group. And then you return the final order. So a lot of code, a lot of comments. I definitely think I, I think this was like approaching, well, I guess I didn't have comments to begin with, so it was around the same amount of code, but I didn't have helpful functions. So I think for these bigger functions, like for some small stuff, you can kind of make it look pretty neat right away. But for these bigger ones, it is good to like go back, refactor, comment, things like that, make sure your code doesn't look like total hell, make sure it's like actually, actually readable, it's gonna be useful for the job, right? So, okay, and so let's run this. And we can see that it does work and it's reasonably efficient. And so we can talk about the time and space here as well. So essentially for the time and space, when you're making your adjacency lists, um, so you have n items, right? And then you have before items as well. So technically before items can be really big. Before items is like all your dependencies, but pretty much if you have n items and before items dependencies, it's gonna be somewhere along the lines of, I think worst case scenario, I guess the easier way to think about it would not just ignore this before items and just think like how many dependencies can I possibly have, right? And so because there are no repeating dependencies, right? Like if there's a dependency from two to three, there is no second dependency from two to three that's given in our stuff. So worst case scenario, everything has a dependency for like everything else. So if you had n edges, you would have like this many dependencies essentially. And so that would be n squared. 
and so that this would be n squared and the space as well like if you if you save all your dependencies this would be also n squared because you would have n squared dependencies because that's what you're storing right in this dependency graph you're storing uh dependencies but everything else yeah it's, it's like for every dependency it's linear basically so it all depends on like the number of dependencies you have total um but yeah so hopefully you like this problem and definitely uh i think this is like quite tough for two leak code problems of the day in a row like these are more approaching the um leaco contest stuff problems but hopefully you liked it and i would like i said just because you've seen the solution doesn't mean it's easy to code like now that you know how to do it it's still not easy to code so i definitely would encourage you to try to code it um now that you understand it and if you haven't like if you haven't done topological sort even if you even if i just showed you the solution you're probably not gonna be able to do it so i would definitely recommend doing some like core schedule those types of problems essentially in those you're doing a topological sort on something a lot more basic and then once you can do one, then you can build all these things up. And definitely this is like one of the, yeah, there's, I mean, I can't, I can't imagine anyone doing this in a 45 minute interview. Like, I think even if I told you the solution for most people, um, they'd still take the whole time to code it. And that's if you like, they knew the solution right away. So definitely a tough one, but, uh, but yeah, hopefully you liked it. And if you did, please like the video and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. So thanks for watching.